Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link Archer AX55. It is a dual band Wi-Fi 6 router, which I'm going to unbox, do some speed tests and range tests to see how well this thing actually performs. So it has a speed rating of AX3000 and it does support gigabit. It has a few gigabit ethernet ports in the back. So looking at this thing, it is Wi-Fi 6 and you know, it's pretty fast. It's also backwards compatible with previous wireless standards. So you don't have to have Wi-Fi 6 devices to connect to this thing. So it does come with TP-Link Home Shield, which is TP-Link's version of their network protection, parental controls, quality of service, and their reports. It can also be used in a mesh network. So it supports TP-Link's one mesh. So let's, let's just say you get this thing, you put it on one side of your house and you just don't have that much good coverage on the other side of your house. You could in theory get another one of these exactly, or you could get another TP-Link router. Let's just say the Archer AX73, which also supports one mesh. And these two can work together to create a single network, very similar to how a TP-Link deco works essentially. It also has a USB 3.0 port, which allows you to plug in an external hard drive, which then can become shared throughout the network. So different devices can access, you know, different files or the same files essentially on the same network. And it also has up to WPA3 security if all the devices support it. And it also comes with Smart Connect. Essentially, you have your dual band, which is a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz band, but it can actually combo those in into a single SSID. So you essentially connect to one Wi-Fi name and it automatically determines which device goes where. All right, so let's open this up and yeah, we'll go from there and I'll set it up and we'll basically play with it. Okay, so, okay, so some instructions came out of this thing. So quick installation guide, essentially how to connect it to your modem and stuff, which is always helpful. So these things are pretty straightforward. It also tells you to get the app. I think it's the Tether app for this guy. Yeah, the Tether app, which I've used for the other ones. And okay. It does come nicely packaged and you could, you know, adjust your antennas. So these antennas actually make a difference. So depending on how you point them, it can literally actually make a huge difference. So it's very important when you're installing these routers to play around with the antennas, to kind of point them in directions where you typically would use the Wi-Fi, and that would literally give you better Wi-Fi signals just by adjusting these around. Okay, looking at the back of this thing, so we have the WPS and the reset button. We have the USB 3.0, which allows you to share drives. You have your WAN port, which stands for Wide Area Network. So this is where you would connect your modem to. And you have four different LAN ports, LAN standing for Local Area Network. So essentially, if you want to hook up another computer, you know, hook it up to any one of these four ports, doesn't matter. Or if you need more ports than four, you would hook it up to an unmanaged switch. So this device, along with the unmanaged switch and stuff, I'll put product links in the description below. So if you guys are interested in that. And this is your power button. So essentially you don't need to unplug it. And you do actually get to wall mount this as well. I mean, that is an option if you want to do that. All right, so in the box, you also get an ethernet cable. It is cat 5 e which does support uh, gigabit. And you also have your power cable, which is 100 to 240 volts, so you should be good to go. It's been over two weeks since I've unboxed this thing and I've been using it as my main router at home. So I have around 50 to 60 devices that connect to this thing and so far so good. In fact, the second day or so, there was a firmware update for this thing that addressed a few issues according to the log, but so far so good. So. I did the speed test and range test. I used my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, because this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. I also used my Pixel 6 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6E device. Now, in theory, this can go faster. Well, not just in theory, it does go faster if you use a Wi-Fi 6E router with this thing. But with this router, because this is Wi-Fi 6, you're pretty much gonna get very similar speeds to the Wi-Fi 6 device, which was, pretty much the case. I mean, there were a few differences, but mostly it was pretty much the same. I also tested the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is another Wi-Fi 6E device, and the speeds were very similar to all three of these. Okay, so 
Starting off with the speed test. My first test was with the, the phones. I got the speed test app, which is basically a download and upload speed test that you get from a public speed test server. So you get those numbers, jot them down, you're good to go. So no matter how fast your router is, when you're doing an internet speed test or accessing the internet, you're limited by your internet speed. So in my case, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So again, no matter how fast, I, if I get the world's fastest router, if I'm accessing the internet, those are my speeds. Now, it could fluctuate a bit, but those are pretty much, you're limited by your ISP. So, uh, unless your router's slower, then you, you're pretty much limited by your router. So, there's pretty much that bottleneck. Okay, so doing that speed test with my computer that's hooked up via Ethernet, I pretty much get those full speeds. However, doing the speed test with the Wi-Fi devices, that's usually a different story. The speeds I got for the Wi-Fi 6 device, the iPhone, was 522 megabits per second download and 342 megabits per second upload. So all the speeds I say are going to be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. That's the conversion rate. So with the Wi-Fi 6E device, I got 527 down and 268 up. So very similar speeds. I mean, the upload was actually slower on the Wi-Fi 6E device, but fairly similar for the most part. Following that, I did a local area speed test, so I used my computer as my local speed test server. So I essentially, this becomes a server, and I go from phone to router to computer, isolating the router, because now I'm no longer relying on my internet service provider capping me, and or the public speed test server being busy with other people's and or company's requests. In this case, I got 858 down, 691 up with the Wi-Fi 6 device, and with the Wi-Fi 6C, I got 908 down, 896 up. So this one, the Wi-Fi 6C upload was, I would say, decently better than the Wi-Fi 6 device. So then I moved on to range test. So Range is basically still doing this local area speed test and I just walk away in a certain direction and I basically jot down the numbers. Now range will vary based on location. So if you have a lot of walls, if you're between floors, if there's a lot of other wireless interference around, meaning let's just say if you're in a building and there's a lot of routers around, that can also hurt your range. So I'm in a place that's a bit more open now. So I typically get more range than I used to in the past. So this thing was pretty fast at 20 feet and it went all the way up to 180 feet away. So this is basically me outside. Starting at 50 feet, I'm actually outside, but it goes all the way up to around 180 feet. And I'm honestly getting pretty decent speeds, but then I just walk a few feet and it just cuts off. It no longer connects to Wi-Fi. So, and the ping and the jitter I recorded at the farthest distance. So this was a request by some people. So my ping was four and my jitter was two at 180 feet away. When I was closer, it was that or better, but those numbers are already pretty amazing. So you pretty much want small numbers. The smaller, the better, and those are pretty small. Now, this thing comes with the Tether app, which is very similar to the other archers that I tested. And it's a very good app. It's, it's also very similar to the Deco app by TP-Link. So it's a nice clean interface. It gives you several options. It's not like Asus that it gives you. <laughs> I always joke around with Asus because they literally give you so many options. It's almost ridiculous. Um, so I wanted to say a billion options. But this gives you all the important options. And it's a nice clean interface. It pretty much works. And it's, it's not buggy. It's... I don't know, for some reason I really like TP-Link's interface. Probably the Deco is my favorite from all of them, but the Tether, again, is very similar, very, very good app. So, final thoughts. What do I think of this router? So, I'd say, considering the price, I'd say it's a pretty good router because you get some ports. If you need to expand on these, you would just get an unmanaged switch. And I'll put those links in the description below if you guys are interested in getting stuff like that. Uh, but essentially, you would hook up any one of these LAN ports, local area network, 
to an unmanned switch and then you can expand your ethernet port. And you know, you do have the USB. I didn't test that out, but you could basically hook up an external hard drive to this thing and you could share that within the network. And with TP-Link, you do get like a few extras uh, like the TP-Link Home Shield and stuff. They do offer the pro version with the subscription, but I, I usually don't need that. I don't sign up for those subscriptions. But other than that, I'd say for the price, it's a pretty solid router. It looks pretty nice. It functions. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. As always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.